Hi, welcome to a new series, Air Gun Masters. We're your hosts. I'm Gary Chillingworth, this is Mick Garvey, Hi. and this is Neil Thornacroft. Morning. Over the coming weeks, we're going to have a series of videos looking at all different aspects of air gun shooting. We're going to be looking at HFT, which is my sport. We've got field target boo, which is Neil Thornacroft's sport. Long range hunting and plinking, which is Mick's sport. Yep. And we're also going to be having a go at target sprint. That's running and shooting. I'm hoping it's going to be a great series and a huge thanks to Premier Guns. And I'd like to introduce you to Adrian, who is our kind host for today. Hello, Hi, Adrian. Gary. How are you doing? You're right, guys. Adrian, thanks. All right. Thanks, Governor Neil. This is Adrian. He's the air gun manager at Premier Guns and he's allowed us to use this wonderful range here at Brook Valley. Adrian, do you want to tell us a bit about Premier Guns and a little bit about Brook Valley? Yeah, Gary, thanks. Uh, so we had the idea a while ago uh, for getting involved with air rifles and um, I think it started out we were going to have, I was going to do a series of videos explaining FT, explaining HFT, but let's face it, there's not many people who want to watch me doing all of that. <laughs> My mother maybe, but that's about as far as it'll go. But so I really appreciate yourself and Mick coming down and talking about the sport in more detail. Neil's involved with the club, so Neil hasn't got to come too far. So, yeah. but thanks again, anyway, Neil. So Neil, anyone will know in the sport, sort of leading FT shooter in Springer. Lead, lead FT, FT, HFT, uh, or uh, I wouldn't say leading, but I'm, I do okay. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, Mick does all the shooting of uh, all the vermin and bits and pieces. And we'll do a bit of that, yep. But, but tell you what, this Brook Valley looks amazing. We've got a beautiful plinking range here. I mean, how far does that go out to? At the moment, I think it's about 60, 60 70 metres. Uh, but they are looking to extend. Hang on, no, we're English. Metres? Metres, oh, okay. No, the, back, the backstop's 120, isn't it? Oh, there you go. 120, yeah. what, 120 yards? Metres. 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 Oh, yeah. At 10 percent. That might take 10 percent off. 10 yards. Yeah. We've got, what, quad bikes, which we're going to be using in a bit. We've got quad HFT bikes. courses, FT courses. Yeah, uh, they look in, this grand's looking to run the British Open as well, FT. Okay. Uh, with that, they're going to have some side shoots. Uh, I believe in September that that shoot they've also got Manufacturers Day, where Day State Air Arms, Air Max, a few others are going to come along so people can try their guns out on the ranges here as well. So, Thank you so much to Premier Guns for getting us today. I'm really looking forward to shoot here at Brook Valley. So I think it's time we stop yapping and we go off and get some shooting done. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Off we go. Okay, so we're here on the range and this is where you'll get really good at HFT. The most important thing you can do is to make up one of these, a range card. And what you need to do is you need to learn where your aim points are, 8, 10, 40, 35, because in HFT you can't use a laser rangefinder or dial in, everything has to be done by eye. So you need to know on your multi aim point reticle where your pellet's going to hit. Now we've got two brilliant guns here. We've got the HFT 500 and we've got the HW 100. These are two superb rifles for HFT. This one is topped off with an Optisan ES multi aim point reticule. Brilliant scope. First time I've actually used one, but it's just like the old EVX. And this is a scope that I know incredibly well, the Optisan CP. For my, for my money, pound for pound, one of the best uh, HFT scopes on the market today. So there are our rifles, both single shots, both incredibly accurate, 40 yards, we're ringing the bell every time, but get yourself to a range, get your card made up, get yourself a glove, and you will be a much happier HFT shooter. Okay, so you're on your HFT course, you're all zeroed in, you've got your range card. So what are the rules? Well, a lot of people will shoot up the peg, now that's really good because you can see over anything that there's an issue with. But to get maximum stability, a rifle like this is perfect. Adjustable cheek piece, adjustable butt pad. You can drop the butt pad down, you can raise the cheek piece up, and then you can rest the butt of the rifle, but only the rear of the rifle on the ground, and you can get maximum stability on your rifle. Got to be careful that the pistol grip doesn't touch the ground, that's against the rules, and you've always got to get a good cheek weld so you've got a consistent view through your gun or through your scope. We obviously have springers as well. And a lot of people will use this, a TX200. Now this is my competition gun. And as you can see, I've got a dropped rear cheek piece, sorry, a dropped rear butt pad 
and a raised cheek piece. So now when I'm on the rifle, my cheek is welded to the, to the cheek comb and I'm as stable as stable as you can be. And anyone who tells you that you cannot shoot a spring gun rested on the ground has never ever tried it because this works for me and I've won a few, I've won a, a, a few competitions just like this. So it does work, but these are the sort of rifles you're gonna use in HFT. Okay, so before we head down onto the course and do some shooting, let's talk about targets. Now, as you can see, the face plates of these targets, different sizes, different shapes, but we've also got different kill zones. 15 millimeters, this one's 25 millimeters, this one's 35 millimeters. You can get them to go out as big as 40 millimeters. In HFT, we have a 15 millimeter, which is from 13 to 25 yards. We've got a 20 millimeter, which can go from eight to 30 yards a 25 millimeter which will go from 8 to 45 yards sorry to 40 yards we've got a 30 millimeter which is also 8 to 40 yards and a 35 millimeter which is 8 to 45 yards a standard hft target if you hit the plate you get a clank that will score you a single point if your pellet goes through the hole that hits this paddle it falls over and you score two points there are many different companies who supply targets like this. One of my favorites that I personally use is flopover.co.uk, but takes your money, you takes your choice. HFT targets come in different types. This is a competition target. When, you full over, full, when it falls over, hopefully, you pull the string and the target resets. You can also get practice targets, which are usually on a piece of rebar, and that way you knock it over, and then you hit a paddle below, and that will reset the target. Plenty of targets out there. Lots of fun to shoot, that's your HFT target. So here we are for the shooting challenge. So what are we going to do for the HFT? Well, we've got three targets set out, a 15 mil at 25 yards, we've got a 25 mil at around about 40 yards, and we've got a 25 mil out at 30 yards. So let's see how these guys do with shooting HFT targets. Then after that, the next part of HFT is how good you are at range finding. So we're gonna take the guys on the course, we're gonna pick out four or five targets, we're gonna ask them what the range they think they is, they are even, and then we're gonna laser them and see how close and accurate they are. And then the final bit of the challenge is all about humor, because that's what HFT is all about. So I'm gonna get them to tell their best bad dad joke. That's the HFT challenge. Well, we missed the uh, we missed the 20, uh, 15 mil at 25 yards, but we killed a 35 yarder. So, three out of four, not too bad.
Well, that's the shooting part of the challenge over and done with. I think the guys did very well considering this isn't their sport. Mick, I think we've got to hand it just to you. I know you're not used to shooting at D without dialing in and, and stuff like that. So I think as you're a hunter, this was better for you. It wasn't much better, yeah. More and more in my comfort zone. Felt exactly. better than it. Totally alien? Slightly. That's why we've <laughs> always said FT shooters. <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me in the FT shot. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to the range finding port of the video. So off to the range. Right, so this is the range finding part of the challenge. What I need to do is one at a time, go in and range find by eye that crow that is attached to the tree and then the tank that is on the ground. So Mick, if you go in first, write down number one is the crow, number two is the tank, and write it on your bit of paper. Okay, gents, what do we have for the crow? Mick? 39. 39? 41. Neil? 41. Goes to Neil, 42 yards, although home ground advantage. <laughs> the tank, what do we got for that? Mick? 43. 43? 44. 44. Again, goes to Neil, home ground advantage. So that's two for Neil, two for Neil, zero for Mick. On to the next lane. Back what I've got no worries. On, on, on okay, gentlemen, Mick, what do you reckon? 36. 36. 36. 36. Score draw, 39. Mm -hmm. On to the next lane. Okay, our final two lanes, we've got the crow on the post and the phoenix rising from the flames, which is what Mick has to do to win this challenge. So, Mick, off you go. Okay. okay, so what do we have for the crow? 37. 37? 30. You are bang on the money. 30 yards. Real. Yeah. And it's because it's downhill, it makes it yeah, look well, further away. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, also you've got those, that's the other thing in HFT, you will often get people cutting grass to draw your eye yeah, in, yeah, yeah. and it like makes it look further it. away. I'm, I'm aware of it, like... Yeah. And the Phoenix from the Flames, which you certainly are not. 16. 16? 17. Mick wins one! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we have to go, that one goes down to Neil. So, Mick won the shooting challenge, Neil won the range finding challenge, so it all comes down to the dad joke to, for oh. the HFT competition. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a wander back to the range, we're gonna look at a few extra guns that you can use for HFT, we're gonna get the dad, dad joke out of the way, and we're gonna be awarding the golden medal for the HFT master of the day. Well, that's the HFT over and done with, and what a cracking time we had. Now, obviously during the HFT, we use the HFT 500 and the HW 100, and, and they're guns that you see in a, a lot of videos all over, the top, all over the place. But the thing is, there are many other guns you can use for HFT. And here are three, and these are three that I've never really thought about before, but I've had the chance, thanks to Premier Guns, to have a look at them today. On our right, we've got the FX Crown. This is the AGT Uragan 2, and that is the... Airmark's Catran. Airmark's Catran. Now, Mick, 
you're a FX ambassador? No, I'm, I'm, oh. I've got close ties with, this, with, with the FX company, but uh, I what, do use a lot of FX rifles. What do you know? I mean, what do you know about the FX Crown? The FX Crown's like, it was, it's got a great following. It's, it's won quite a few competitions. Uh, it's well loved. It's obviously that FX are known for the tactical style rifles. Mm. This is more of a sporter style, which is a little bit different, but it has, it, it is a great gun. It is a great gun without a doubt. Now, now looking at this rifle, that's a, what a, 0.48 litre uh, bottle on the front. Yep. So I reckon if you filled it up from a compressor or a tank, you know, like the Hills compressor we've been uh -huh. using today, yep. um, I reckon that would give you lots of shots. So you don't have to keep on going back and filling up and filling up. Absolutely. I suppose that's one of the advantages. You, you get that. You get that many shots in here. You won't want to have to carry. It. If, you, if every if every other shot was a kill, you probably won't want to be carrying all the rabbits bike. Yeah. No. Uh, I you, you, that. You'd have to make four or five trips. Uh, you'd be into the hundreds for that. Yeah. For the shot. Whereas, say, this Uragan 2, um, again, another very large cylinder, but a long cylinder as opposed to a, a, a you know, a, a stubby one. Um, it's a bullpup rifle. You've got the magazine at the back, you've got a nice long barrel, and it's internally suppressed. A very, very quiet rifle that I suppose you could use for hunting. Absolutely, yeah. And then HFT, and, I mean, it's, it's really well balanced. So, if maybe upper body strength is not... Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not your forte, and you want a rifle that's well balanced to the back. Something like this might be good for you. Um, again, air marks. What do you think of that, Neil? Yeah, it's a nice rifle. Like I say, never really shot me before. My, you know, my forte is FT, so uh, I have uh, tried this rifle on the range. Mm. It's very, very nice. Uh, it comes with the uh, the folding stock, very compact for carrying around. Wow. Um, uh, magnetic. Uh, yeah, beautiful rifle to shoot. Yeah. Again, sub 12 foot pounds, uh, groups very well with QIS or any palette of your choice, I shouldn't think it'd matter. But uh, yeah, beautiful thing, it can be adapted for HFT, hunting, and even with the uh, Picatinny on the bottom, you could probably attach a hamster, Yeah. Uh, and even try FT with it. So I would say, as a hunter Mick, would something like that where you could fold the stock rounds, so you could put it into a, a rucksack. So if you've yeah. got to move through a permission where you maybe got to go across roads and things like that, as opposed to carrying a gun in a gun slip, something like that into a rucksack, that, would that, that be an advantage? Absolutely, that's exactly what it comes into its own. It keeps it nice and compact, it puts into a rucksack. It's, you don't have to carry it in a long slip. It's not seen, you don't alarm people because they do look quite tactical. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the folding stock is a, is a great thing. And quite a few of these guns are coming out recently with folding stocks. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's, it's a good thing. I think, so basically what we're saying is we've got three really interesting guns here and there are many other guns out there. So, so get to Premier Guns, get to your local gun shop and pick them up, fill them and, and, and see what works for you and for your, particular, for your particular needs. But for today, we were talking about HFT. And what we finally need to do now is we need to hear the joke, part three of our shooting challenge. So. We'll start on the right. Mick, what is your dad joke? My dad joke is, what is brown and sticky? I do not know, Mick. What is brown and sticky? Stick. Go away. Stick. Neil? <laughs> well, uh, I went to pick my mate up the other day. He's an elderly gentleman to, to go shooting. And I picked him up, we went around the corner and there was a funeral procession going down the road. And he tipped his hat and I said, well, that's mighty uh, respectful of you. He says, well, it's the least I could do is shoot. I was married to her for 60 years. Oh. Mick, what's brown and sits on top of a piano? I don't know, Gary. What is brown and sits on top of a piano? Beethoven's fifth movement. <laughs> but I think for today, we're going to give that to Neil. Oh, mainly yeah. because you're, well, you deserve to burn in hell for that. <laughs> brown and sticky. Well done. Cheers, guys. Thanks Thanks you very much. Filthy mind. It was some, actually some great shooting from the pair of them and from the range finding. And that's what HFT is all about. Both of these guys can shoot the hind legs off of a flea. But the ability to look at something and range find is what HFT is all about. But brilliant guys, you, you did absolutely amazingly. So all that leaves us to do is once again to thank Premier Guns, to thank Brook Valley for having us today. Thank you for watching and join us on a new episode of Air Gun Masters very, very soon. All we've got to do now is exit stage left, pursued by a Mick. Ta-da. Goodbye.